rated cost. Um, let me bring all this home by talking now about Lawrence Ross's book, another section to the notes here, where he contrasts the law in action from the formal law. Law in action is about the law in the books. Ross says, this is a famous summary of his quote, the formal law in practice is one, simplified, two, more liberal, three, less equitable. Very famous quote. Let's look at that. What does he mean? Let's first of all take that, the formal law, in theory, in practice, it's one, it's simplified. Well, let's start with that. The formal law is simplified. In, in liability terms, how do you simplify liability? Well, look, when a car accident takes place, you can't afford to send out the engineers to measure the road. You can't afford to go scouring for witnesses right, left, and center. You can't afford to do uh, uh, CCTV uh, coverage. You can't afford very often to even look at the, at, at the statements from your, your claimant. It, 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 it's very garbled. When the claim is worth just a couple of thousand pounds whiplash, you just don't do that. And there are certain presumptions you work on as well. The routine processing of claims by using rules of thumb. This is what I got from Ross. When I was, that's what I began understanding what was going on. This book in 1970 about how claims are just as dealt with road accidents. Rules of thumb. Forget the rules in the books. Throw those away. Who's at fault, do you think, when you, one car hits the back of another? Presumption, always the car behind. That's not the case, of course. It can be the fault uh, of the car in front. But the presumption is the, is the car behind. Vehicles in this country turning right, it's the vehicle turning right. Yeah, across the lane. Into the, it's always the vehicle turning. If you hit a stationary vehicle, it's always the car that's moving. It's at fault. If you hit a pedestrian, yeah, it's the car. There's, there's a presumption. And in fact, in Japan, there's a very there's a complex set. There's an 80-page set of judicial guidelines as to where these presumptions apply, uh, as the Japanese lawyer showed me. Um, we have them, similarly, in a more informal way. But we are using rules of thumb. We don't investigate the actual facts. Remember what I said to you last time? Does a tears talk about you know, which, which better represents the, the real system, social security, or tort? Tort doesn't deal in real facts. It deals with guesswork. It deals with, with, with summaries, which are never uh, adequate situations uh, described of what's actually going on. Look, this is a quote. This is a tremendous quote from, from, from Ross. Although the formal law, they put the question of negligence in difficult terms, and you've met that the first year, first semester, yeah? Negligence in difficult terms. The law in action finds that the basic grammatic facts of the accident are usually sufficient. It's usually sufficient to just have a rough dry gap to answer the question. The price paid is reduction of any meaningful consideration of fault. If you think the process is about fault in practice, it's not. It's rough guesswork. It's not blaming people's morally for doing wrong. In the vast majority of small claims, there is little investigation of the facts. It is not a moralistic system. It is not anything. There's a substitution of mechanical presumptions for scientific-based investigation. I thought, yeah, when I saw that quote. That makes sense to me. And they, 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 they stress the importance of facts rather of the case rather than the law. This might be a, a relief to some of you to find out you don't have to study the law after all. It's the facts of drive. driving. Ab driving ability and common sense are more important than tort case law, says Hazel Gen. <laughs> In work accidents, there was, there was a bit more law. Uh, the, the, there was the health and safety regulations and that, how that was used for breach of statutory duty and is still used nowadays. Uh, there's a bit more in the law there. But for road accidents, it wasn't much law in that at all. I, I, lo I love this quote from a barrister. This is the ultimate lazy barrister. I love this quote. <laughs> Famous quote from, from Hazel Gen. What, is, what, is, what does Hazel say? She's found this barrister and he said, 
oh, well, I, you know, I, I don't need to do work before the trial. <laughs> Um, the evidence is very, is very rarely the picture that will emerge at trial anyway. There used to be a chap in this chambers whose motto was, never mind about the law, it'll all be decided on the facts. And never mind the facts, because that will all change by the time your client gets into the witness box anyway. That's the ultimate barrister excuse for doing no work at all before trial. But I can sympathise with the idea it's all about facts. It's not about law, law, law. Simplifying, after liability, about simplifying damages, simplifying quantum. Yes, we use, we use uh, um, tables and averages, don't we? we? Nowadays, we use the judicial co college booklet on pain, suffering, loss of immunity. So it's simplified in a sense in that way. Uh, um, um, the Ogden tables simplify uh, life expectancy and discount rates we, to work certain averages. We've got that table uh, for, for us to work out. Um, uh, the simplification of damages. Well, uh, well Ross, Ross talks. I, I, was, I was abused by Ross. I, I, I thought one time looked for equivalents of this in the UK. But in the States, they um, multiply the medical bills. How much damage do you have for pain and suffering? Well, how much is your medical bill? <laughs> we'll multiply that by a coefficient of two or three or four or whatever. But, um, I, I, I've known in this country, uh, so time, the longer you spend in a hospital, the more it must have been painful and suffering for you. Well, not necessarily, but that, that, that's, that's the sort of uh, simplification. That the, you, you, know, you can't investigate pain. You can't investigate. You haven't got the time to investigate pain and actual loss and actual suffering. Give me a simple coefficient. Um, multiply the time spent in hospital, perhaps. But in the States, multiply the medical bill. So simplifying quantum. So that was simplification. The law in practice is, one, simplified. Two, it's more liberal. It's more liberal than the formal law because more claims are paid than those caused by fault. We're constantly paying non-fault accidents in the tort system, despite what that first semester told you, fault does not figure all that often. Why? The first reason is the one to concentrate on. Costs. Claimant lawyers can run up and have run up ex extensive costs beyond what the claimant is claiming. Remember what the, the, what the Jackson investigation showed us? Uh, under £5,000, they were grossly disproportionate costs. And the claims uh, under £15,000 the, the costs were greater than the damages. Costs are tremendously worrying. So insurers, as I said to you before, will pay up more readily, more quickly. They encourage the costs. Pre-med offers, remember that? Before any medical evidence. Third-party capture, they come to you directly. Take this £1,000 now. Take this £2,000 now. And, and, of course, if you go towards trial, maybe, maybe they're also worried about things like the sympathetic factor, which I'll talk to you about tomorrow, about why claimants may have some more of a sympathetic approach before a judge. I'll talk to you about that. Uh, they may be worried about bad publicity. If it was a disaster case, you wouldn't want to litigate um, horrendous disaster cases to court unless you really had to, for the difficulties your uh, client may then suffer, uh, especially if he was a manufacturer uh, and run, run a... Uh, uh, a particular product to trial that would put them off uh, the market no end, wouldn't it? So there's all sorts of liberal factors which in practice make the law much more liberal. It is supposed to be a fault-based system. In small claims, it is not a fault-based system. Of course, who does suffer? Who does? Where is it they're actually a fault-based system? It's the more serious injuries. If you talk about the more uh, serious injuries, that's the harder claims to win. The bigger the, the injury, the bigger the claimant needs the money, and the harder the time he's going to have it in bringing his tort claim. Let's move on to the third um, factor, um, which Ross talks about. In practice, the claim is simplified. Uh, 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 secondly, it's more liberal. And now, thirdly, it's more inequitable. It's more unfair. Tort in practice is more unfair. And the tort seems to be in the textbooks. In the textbooks, it's all about fault and wrongdoing, moral blame, not being as good as a reasonable man would. You, you, if, you, 
you show that fault, you can, you can then recover, you can recover everything as much as you uh, put you back in the position which you were in the first place. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. We've got, as I've already said, one shot of claimants against repeat player insurers. There's greater pressure on claimants during settlement. They need the money. The case has been going on for several years. They're under psychological pressure. They're under financial pressure. And then when the payment into court is made, it's really acute financial pressure. Uh, it, the system is much less equitable. This is the finding of Ross, 1970 study back in the States. The tort rewards, look at this, tort rewards disproportionately, let's go through them. One, the less seriously injured. The less seriously injured who don't need the money, who are getting the money from elsewhere because they've got a uh, their, their employer will continue to pay their wages, perhaps. Curiously, they are far more likely to get money easily from the tort system. The overwhelming number of tort claims for less than £5,000. I doubt whether people really, really need that £5,000. Uh, um, yet they will be disproportionately benefited by this settlement system, which is not talked about in tort at all in the textbooks, unless you go and look at accidents, composition, and the law. Those who are richer, I think, can bear the costs more than uh, uh, pressures more than the poorer. Those able to withstand cost pressures are those who've got people who've got savings, those who can understand the system perhaps better. Uh, but mind you, let's mind you, first offers of settlements are accepted in two thirds of cases, according to the Oxford study. Those with the better or more aggressive lawyers. Well, we've all, <laughs> it's a rather trite statement to you to say you know, people with better lawyers get more money than the people with worse lawyers. Um, but uh, um, uh, the aggressive point is a bit controversial. Remember that? I, I introduced that to you last time. Uh, there was that lawyer's quote I gave you. Um, uh, and, and again, certainly suggested that aggressive lawyers will get more money for their clients than non aggressive, compromising lawyers. I suggested to you last time. That may not be so, in a, certainly not so in every case, and, and some of the best lawyers I know are compromising lawyers. They're only aggressive when there is a need for them to uh, be aggressive. Uh, 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 Ross also goes on to say, the better educated. In other words, there's a class relationship in tort. Those who are better educated, those who got more money, those who are better able to understand the system, who know where to, go, where to get a lawyer from, who can understand financial figures put in front of them, who can resist the pressures of costs, middle classes, the middle classes will get more. That may not be a surprising statement to many of you, but go and look for that in a tort textbook. You won't get anywhere near it. Class in relation to tort. And look, in the States... There was uh, inevitably a part of class was race. It was the white city dweller who got more money in 1970 Chicago as opposed to downstate Illinois, the black people who were injured in those accidents, as Lawrence Frost found. There was a racial element, a city element, and a class element. You never see that discussed in any talk school in this country. 